So I'm going to talk over the bombs. <laughs> I hope it doesn't bother you all. Um, we're Elise and David Plants. We're from a group called BioBeats, and we make um, what we call multimodal digital therapy tools. Some are apps like this one, and some are physical. We made a device called the Breathing Stone, which takes heart sensors, ECG plates from something that looks like a pebble, um, and then visualizes heart rate variability as somebody breathes in and out. That, that's actually an autonomous robot that's meant to be a, a digital therapy tool. But Ominator was made because we originally made an app <coughs> called Here and Now, which is in um, the iTunes store, that helped people do something uh, which is really hard to do when you're uh, stressed, which is to breathe um, and to elicit the parasympathetic nervous system mode. But to measure it is actually harder than to do it. And doing a biofeedback tool like that um, was our sort of objective. We did it by capturing um, heart rate from the phone, so from the LED and camera of the phone by making the, sh the, the finger shine bright red. Um, I guess I'm not that relaxed right now. But, um, oh, yay. That's easier to talk over. Um, but then the, the breathing guide is really very simple, right? And so behind it, I mean, we're just capturing analysis now. We, we throw that at cloud servers, actually, that analyze HRV versus sympathetic and parasympathetic activation so that it, it then gives the person a, a sense of whether they're managing to relax or not. But the exercise itself simply blurs the border of the intervention itself. If you manage to actually go from tense to relax, then it sharpens the image in the background. <laughs> um, Ominator was a very different kind of app in that um, Elise and I wanted to just explore the idea of what would happen if you didn't have the biometrics at all. If you were simply exploring something that the human user could do without giving you their data. So using the voice alone. Um, and so what we did is create a, an app that responded to voice and visualized the, the idea of the voice over time um, to give the same result, or uh, actually the same therapeutic use. In this app, we just use um, sonification and visualization of the voice to do that. So if you, if you give it a sustained pitch, um, it then creates music to that pitch. Right, so. Okay, so as David said, Ominator is an iOS app which draws on uh, several themes related to human machine interaction and generative design. Uh, the music for the app is created using pure data to enhance someone's uh, humming uh, into a kind of embracing music track. Um, and then Open Frameworks was used to generate the visuals, um, also affected by the pitch and loudness of the voice. Um, we experimented with discrete processes such as simple timbre or melodic patches and um, visual pattern generations focused on basic geometric forms. So then we explored a series of test pieces where we could understand the value of each process against each other and it's brought us to explore the human voice as a control, um, as an input both to the sonic and visual levels. The main, the main thing that we wanted to um, be inspired by was procedural content generation processes that interacted with the physical. And the primary inspiration for that, for us, was Thomas Heatherwick and the kind of uh, um, you know, procedural generation as architecture or as design. So actually the origin of this started with the idea of trying to harmonize a single note in as many ways as possible. Um, I come from a music background, and this um, kind of manifested in a in a very simple app which was designed to help beginners um, get through the kind of open string playing on a violin which can be a bit, bit boring if you're just standing there sawing away at the violin. Um, so we made, I made this very short um, video just to show you that app, it's less than a minute long, just to show you what I started with.
Oh, it's not coming out there, is it? Sorry. You can hear that just about, can you? Yeah. We could plug it in, yeah. <coughs> buttons obviously change which string is being harmonised. Okay, so um, the problem with this is that the, that, that app was very unsatisfying in many ways. Um, first of all, uh, the synthesized sounds are very thin and underdeveloped. And also, um, I wanted the app to respond, like to, to tell what string was being played, not having to choose it each time. Um, so I worked and reworked the synthesis patches to get some better uh, synthesized sounds. Uh, and also um, added some bell sounds for a kind of more meditative connotation. Um, so this is uh, how the app works, basically. The microphone comes into the fiddle object in Pure Data, um, which um, gives out a MIDI number as a kind of detected pitch. Um, and this is then quantized to make it whole numbers and kind of in a useful range, and distributed around the patch to the various things that are going to be playing the notes. Um, also going around the patches like a time base which sends uh, a pulse all the way around which enables kind of rhythm control um, in terms of kind of when things are triggered on a beat of a bar and then there's a couple of melody generators um, to, to kind of kind of effectively make tunes which aren't the same every time um, I can just show you one of those this is the um, kind of a, what I call a sign tune because it's just a sine wave, it's a very simple synth but um, here you can just see I'm selecting what octave it, it needs to come in at, uh, and then depending on what beat of the bar, it'll either play a top of a, a fifth or an octave. And then this just changes the octave of the whole tune, um, now and again, just to keep the interest. And then on this side, um, this will randomly throw a note in at a kind of random time in the bar, um, which will either be a fifth or a ninth or a, what's that, seventh octave, <laughs> an octave and four, I think that is. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of, instead of being the same tune all the time, it, it just varies a little bit to keep the interest up. Okay, and then this is the loudness scale. So what happens is, as you hum into it, if you hum very close, you hear more harmonics up the, um, the fundamental. Um, almost kind of, this was, again, with the meditative connotations, the idea of the... Um, Tibetan throat singing, where they, they go up and down the harmonics. Um, it's really more to kind of make you think of that rather than, you know, replacing it or even emulating it. Um, and that's just sort of how I did it. Cool. And then, in, in, I mean, in the visual engine, we used, we took data from Pure Data, which is running within iOS, to open frameworks to create stripe and matrix patterns. It's really a matrix pattern that contains a stripe pattern, and that's the procedural <coughs> uh, content generation basis for the visual engine, where we start with a base curve and a very simple geometric primitive that has a horizontal straight line as a base curve and a vertical line segment as the geometric primitive we shift. And then the procedural algorithm just translates and rotates and scales at each generation, um, at each iteration, so that every time we pop the matrix, it, it, it has shifted and rotated. It's a very simple trick, but once we get to the um, um, matrix pattern, that base curve has n geometric primitives with their centers lying on a geometrically twisted matrix. So that um, allows us to produce fairly organic shapes. That's how come we then can focus the, um, the, focus the steps of the push in the matrix into something that looks like a 2D object, but that has 3D depth. Um, so that it gives us a sort of mandala-like um, framework to play with. The idea was to match that to how we were thinking of the sound at the harmonic basis, so that the voice would be augmented both at the matrix level and at the sonic level through going through those, um, through those patterns. 
what we would like to do is to progress from the sort of pro process that we've put in place now, which has PCG plus uh, a really basic idea of noise as the, as the, as the seed for, for uh, the geometric pattern as LFOs augmented by parallel noise. It's actually just simplex noise. Um, and to add a more um, reward-based system for sustained humming. So to understand how to talk to the user about what it is they're doing in sustained humming uh, over time and then bring um, better generated al algorithms that interplay within the music and, um, and the visual pattern. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, in, the, in the app that you saw first, we've done some clinical trials with um, a couple of people. Some, some are clinical, some are mm, actual, you know, in, in the clinic. Uh, that was with um, uh, Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, people about to go into surgery. Um, they're kind of vulnerable and they're in a room. And we had apps like that. We evaluated their reaction to the intervention and also pre and post. And then we, when we released it live, we had around 41,000 people that we were interacting with that um, gave us pre and post. But we were looking at the intervention as a Trojan horse. So actually, we're not measuring whether they relax. We're measuring how they recover from the intervention. Um, and that was a really uh, interesting uh, piece of data to, to, to understand. Because what we wanted to understand is, well, if I tell you that I'm going to relax you, you probably will. But if you're really stressed and I give you an intervention that puts your body at stress, so if I make you breathe five seconds in, five seconds out, you will naturally go into sympathetic mode even though you're already there. And what you will see from heart rate variability are just high frequencies. So the really interesting thing to do is to measure when you stop the exercise and to see if the person goes back into parasympathetic and stays there. Um, so we've been measuring recovery with those, well, they're now around 50,000 people for a few months. Um, and then we did a trial with around 600 people in banking through AXA that um, wore a, a Microsoft Band 2. And so we captured heart rate variability from that, sent it to the app, and every so often we sent them notifications, woke them up, made them do the breathing intervention, and then measured how they recovered through the day. Um, we were publishing the results in the Frontiers of Human Neuroscience journal. Uh, it's a, an issue called Can't Get You Out of My Head. It's about <laughs> perseverative cognition and the idea of biofeedback apps. But I should just add that we haven't done that with Ominator yet. We, we did that talk just the other day about right. whether we could maybe uh, do some student files. Right. I think there was a question over there. Yeah. Uh, brilliant work. I love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you. Um, so I feel sort of analog version of what we were doing, and uh, I found some amazing sort of therapeutic responses from it. Mm. Um, I think right now it's too static for that. But what you can see right now is you, when you give it a note, it will um, shift around that note. So all of the pitch perception will be around that note. And the music that at least writes, so the audio engine will generate music at that pitch and all the, all the harmonics related to that pitch, including some that aren't. So it's like an orchestration of your fundamental pitch. Okay, so it's taking a starting point. Yeah, it actually, is a starting that's point. That's a really interesting point because in the violin thing, Obviously, the chords were all changing. It was modulating. But the, the difficulty being, then, is trying to, like you say, modulate in real time, but still make it kind of smooth, as it were, if the pitch changes. So you have to then the weigh up. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe the user is the person that ends up smoothing that by yeah. the visualisation of what they're the time. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, again, an, an interesting point, because what... I mean, it's too basic now, but what we would like to do... Um, is to shift away from just it, it visualizing amplitude, which is what it does, by the way. I mean, it's basically if the amplitude is there, then it concentrates on the, on the matrix uh, pattern and the stripes become concentric. So it gives you a sort of mandala picture. If you're not there, it disperses. Yeah. But, um, but right now, it's all about dispersion and, and concentric. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
But if you sustain it, you have a good point, of course, is that if the user is there and stays and hums more, we should visualize that process within, within there, perhaps with color. Yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you. Anybody else? Right, okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.